Hi, welcome to module 3 of Editorial Workflow in OJS 3.3. Our author, Jalal, is looking for the right journal for his article, and maybe he's found your journal listed in the directory of open access journals. Maybe he's seen some of our articles being shared by colleagues on Twitter. He's come to the website, read over the focus and scope statement, our copyright policy, and the other guidelines, and now he's ready to submit. He's got a couple of choices. When he is in the About section, he could go to the Submissions page, or maybe click on the Make a Submission button to go there. Now he can see that he has to log in or register to make a submission. Let's click on Register. Now he has to fill in this form with his information. Once he has filled in all of his information, he can agree to the privacy statement, agree to get notifications, and select the last option if he would be willing to review other submissions in this journal. Now he can input his reviewing interests. He'll click on register and follow the instructions sent to his email to validate his account. Now he can log in using the created credentials. He can go ahead and click on the make a submission button. This will take him to the five-step process. If the journal is published in more than one language, the first prompt for the author is to fill in the submission language. After that, he can select the appropriate section for his submission. He can read the section policies and make sure his work matches all the submission requirements. If he has any comment or additional note for the editor, he can leave it on the rich text editor. He also has to agree to be the corresponding contact so that all the communication about the submission goes to him directly. Now he'll have to read and acknowledge the copyright statement and agree to have his data collected. Once he's done this, he can save and continue. The second step of this process is to upload the submission file. He can do this by clicking on the Add File button, the Upload File link, or just dragging and dropping the file. Once the file has been uploaded, he can choose what kind of file or which of the submission components this is. If it is the article text or others such as research materials, transcripts, source text, etc. For this example, let's click on article text. Now he can save and continue. The third step is to enter the article's metadata. He can start with the title, subtitle, and abstract and then go ahead and look at the list of contributors. If he has any co-authors, he can add contributors by clicking on the button. Here, he'll have to fill in the information of all the remaining collaborators. The only required fields here are the contributor's name, contact, and country. However, there are other options to fill in, like his affiliation, and bio statement. He also has to select whether this contributor was an author or a translator, if he is the principal contact for editorial correspondence, and if the name of this contributor should be on the browse list. When he's finished, he can click on save. Now, the list of contributors is complete and he can move on to the additional refinements. These are the metadata set by the journal and they could be or not required fields. When he's happy with the changes, he can save and continue. In the fourth step, he has to confirm his submission. This is the last opportunity he has to go back and check or correct any detail. When he's ready, he can finish the submission and confirm. Step five is just the next steps. An email has automatically been sent out from the editor thanking the author for making the submission, and the editors also received an email notification letting them know that there's a new submission ready to be reviewed. And that's it. With these five simple steps, the author has been able to upload his submission to the journal and is ready to hear back from them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in Module 4.